How's it going? Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today on our 2016 Nissan Frontier, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs for the rear axle. With no weight in the bed of the truck and without our airbags installed, we'll go ahead and take some measurements to see what our ride height is. That way we can compare the two later. Here at the front of the truck, from the ground to the bottom edge of our wheel well, it's about 34 inches. If we take that same measurement here at the back, it's going to be about 35 and one quarter of an inch. Now we went ahead and added a significant amount of weight to the bed of our truck. Now let's go ahead and take the measurements and see where we stand. So here at the front, from the ground to that wheel well edge, it's 35 inches. And here at the back, from the ground to that wheel well, it's going to be 31 and a half inches. So what that's going to mean, since our vehicle is sagging at the rear, that lifted the front of our vehicle up, and that's gonna cause a few things. It's gonna wear out our suspension faster. It's going to cause uneven tire wear. We're going to get decreased braking and steering performance. And not to mention our headlights are going to be tilted up towards the sky. So we could be potentially shining them in other motorists' eyes and not on the road where we need them too. I will go ahead and take our truck through the slalom course and do some evasive maneuvering. So you get up to speed a little bit, start making these turns. And I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty bad. You can feel that weight really just throwing us around. Steering is sloppy. We come to a stop. Brakes just don't feel as sharp either. Now as we go over our bumps, you can feel the truck is really sloppy. It almost feels like the suspension is bottoming out. The steering wheel's really loose. Just not that great of a ride, and personally one I wouldn't like to take. Now we went ahead and installed our airbags, put that same amount of weight in the bed of the truck, and right off the bat, you can immediately notice a difference. Our truck is sitting perfectly level again. Now we'll take those same measurements again and see what they are. From the ground to the edge of the wheel well, that's going to be right over 35 inches. And here at the front, from the ground to the wheel well, it's going to be right about 34 inches. So being able to carry all that weight and still being able to maintain that factory ride height is a huge benefit. We're not gonna have to worry about wearing our tires out unevenly or putting all that extra weight and load on our suspension. The truck's going to handle much better brake much better, and not to mention our headlights are now pointed straight again on the road where they should be. Now with the airbags in and all this weight, we can go ahead and go over our bumps. Right off the bat, you can tell that the weight isn't throwing us around nearly as much. The ride's a lot more comfortable, manageable, and the steering wheel is staying straight and not bouncing around. Now if we do our slalom course, it feels like we have way more control. The weight isn't throwing us around like it was. The truck's a whole lot more manageable. And honestly, you can't even really feel that extra weight in the back like we did before. Airbags are going to be a great choice for you, especially if you plan on carrying a heavy loads in the back of your bed or even a heavy trailer. They're going to provide that extra support, help eliminate that truck sagging down, and just overall make our whole ride experience a whole lot better. The bags are going to have a 3,200 pound load leveling capacity. Now keep in mind, the bags aren't going to actually add weight carrying capabilities to your truck. That's just how much weight the bags themselves can handle. And it's always a good practice for safety reasons to check your truck's owner's manual because you don't want to exceed your truck's weight capacities. Now compared to some of the other styles out there, the advantage our airbags have is that they're going to be fully adjustable for your particular situation. Now the downside is there is a little bit of maintenance required. These do have a minimum pressure rating so every now and again, you're gonna to have to go out, check it, and make sure you have the minimum amount of air pressure in the bag. 
and whenever you're dealing with airbags there's always a small chance that a leak could develop but it's a minor thing you'll have to worry about especially if you're maintaining them properly now my personal favorite thing about these bags is how much adjustability we're going to have it's anywhere from 5 psi all the way up to 100 so that's a pretty large range so whether we're just carrying some light furniture and need a little extra support or say we're carrying a heavy load of gravel or rock and need a lot of support we're going to be able to get that done and we're always going to have the option to add a compressor which a compressor will allow us to maintain or completely adjust our airbags pressures from inside of the truck now as far as the installation goes it is relatively straightforward however it is a little time consuming speaking of which let's go ahead and put these on together now to begin our install we can first start by pre-assembling our airbag now what we're going to do is take our airbag and set the top of it facing up like this we're going to take our top bracket and this is a left or driver side bracket and we can identify it if we flip it over there will be an l on it now this top bracket is going to sit on top of our bag and so the larger hole here will go over this threaded piece and we'll rest on there just like that we can take our nylon jam nut and go ahead and get that started tightened and torqued with it snug we can then torque it down to the amount specified in the instructions Once that's complete, we can take our air fitting and thread that inside. So we'll get it started. We can tighten it down until we get our thread locker that's already on the fitting down in there a little ways. Now you want to tighten this down, but you don't want to crank down on it because it is brass and you don't want to risk cracking it. So you just want to get it nice and snug. About like that. Now we can loosely secure our lower bracket. So if you flip all this upside down, what we're going to do is take our lower bracket and our bolt. And get that threaded in now we don't want to tighten this down completely because it does make it a little easier if we're able to slide it back and forth somewhat when we're underneath the truck so i like to get it about hand tight and then we can completely torque it and everything whenever it's completely installed now over here on the truck it does make life a little bit easier if we remove the spare tire as well as taking a jack and jacking the body of the truck up that way it'll increase the gap in between our frame and rear axle and give us more room to work to get the airbags in. If we move over here to our leaf spring, we're going to have to cut off this Johns bumper. We need to do that as far down as we possibly can. Now I'm gonna use a Sawzall to hack this off. I wanna point out, you wanna be really careful and precise when you're doing this because you don't want that saw blade to kind of jump back on you and accidentally clip your brake line or anything like that. Once we have it cut, we can just lift it off and completely remove it. Now we can take our airbag assembly and set it in place. So the bottom portion will rest on top of the leaf springs, just like that. Now we can take our long carriage bolts and drop these down on our lower bracket. We're going to secure our bottom straps onto those carriage bolts. Now, since we do have a brake cable coming in right here, you may have to kind of feed that strap in, lift them bolts up. This will sit flat against our leaf spring. Behind the cable, what we're going to do is take flange nut and just get that started in each one of our carriage bolts. Now the other side of the airbag is set up the same way. 
So I'll go ahead and drop those bolts through and get those started as well. Now we can work on our top bolts, but before we do that, I'm actually going to use a trim panel tool. Or you can also use a flat end screwdriver to kind of pry behind these fasteners that hold our wire into the frame. That way we can run our bolts behind it and not have to worry about them damaging our wire. So we'll take off a few of them, give us enough room to work. So now we can take our U-bolts and put them in place. Now we're going to take this larger one. It's a little bit wider than the rest. And we're going to put that on this side of the bracket, closest to the back of the truck. So we're going to the wiring, but in front of our brake lines. And drop that down through the bracket. We can get each side started by hand with the flange nut. Now to get the bracket closer to the front, we're going to be using the smaller one. Run that behind our wiring, and this time behind our brake lines. And get both sides lined up. Once again, get them started by hand using a flange nut. Now we can go ahead and snug our units down. Now what we're going to do here for our lower bolts is push our strap here flat against our leaf spring. So we're going to push those carriage bolts all the way down and what we're going to do since these are really long almost too long they're going to be really difficult to tighten down and work with so what i'm going to do is mark them at a more reasonable length that way we can just take them out cut them and put them back in at the proper length now i'm going to cut our bolts using a cutoff wheel however you could use a sawzall or whatever else you might have. Now we can take our shortened bolts, put them back into place. Again, loosely secure them with our flange nuts. Then we can take that other side apart marking our bolts and cutting those the same way that we did these as well. Now with all of our bolts shortened and in place, we can go ahead and snug them all down. With all of our hardware tightened down, now we can torque it to the specification. Now we still have the bolt here on the bottom of the airbag that we need to tighten down. But the reason I leave it loose is because if we need to adjust the bag, slide it on the bottom, we still can. But in our case, we want the bag to be as straight as possible with the axle. So in this situation, the bag is going to be as far forward towards the front of the truck as possible. So we'll let it set there. And then we can come down and tighten down our bolt. Now we can take our included wire loom. What we're gonna do is put that over this bolt. That'll kind of just provide a barrier in between the bolt and the brake line. Now you're not really gonna have to worry much. This does look fairly close, but there is uh, enough space there to not make any interference. And even if it was a little bit tighter, since our bag itself, our brackets, doesn't actually move. You're not going to have to worry about it sliding up and down and chafing anything. Now we can go ahead and plug in our airline and run it. Now I went ahead and cut it in half. That way we have the same amount of length for each side. And whenever we do cut this, we want to make sure that these cuts are really clean and straight, especially those that go into the air fittings. That way we don't have to worry about any leaks. 
So when you cut these, you don't want to use just a regular pair of snips. You want to use a line cutter, a tool like this, or just a really sharp razor knife. So to give you an example, I'll go ahead and make a straight cut. You want to take a look at it, make sure it's straight and clean, and it should look just like that. Now we can take our tubing and plug it into the fitting on the top of our bag. So we do this, we'll line it up straight, push all the way down, then we can lightly pull up on it to make sure it's completely seated. Now I went ahead and ran our airline tubing. So I came up from the bag, secured it to our factory wiring here. And then there's gonna be a hole in the frame that's rounded and nice and smooth. And I actually pushed it into the frame rail so that tubing's running all through here. And then I just have it coming out here right at the end. And I just follow this up along, zip tying to secure our wire tubing up and any extra that we might have. That way, if you ever need to take it apart, you have more to work with. And I dropped it down, made that real clean cut and plugged it into our fitting, which is connected to the included no drill bracket. It just goes around your hitch using a couple of zip ties. Now the passenger side is going to require the same process to get everything installed. However, it's gonna be a little bit easier because you're not gonna to have to worry about going through your brake lines and everything else up top here. Now, as far as the tubing goes, when you run it, you want to include a piece of this thermal protector over the line. That way it'll have a little protection from our exhaust. So now we can go ahead and put some air in our bags to check for any leaks. Now the way you're going to check for leaks is go to all of your fittings and spray them down with some soapy water. Now if there is a leak, you'll see small bubbles constantly forming. So spray it down, keep an eye on it for a few seconds. If you don't see any bubbles, you know it's not leaking. I went ahead and sprayed all of our fittings and verified that the whole system is sealed and not leaking. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs on our 2016 Nissan Frontier.